year of our Lord, 3063. It is a galaxy of peace, where not only worlds of different civilizations have learned to live together, but worlds of different life forms. And this is the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation, the brain center of the universe, where the great scientific and economic minds of the planets work in democratic unity to preserve peace, prosperity, and equality among all men. But powerful and evil forces throughout the galaxy are trying to gain control of those GBI secrets by which the democratic balance is maintained. It is time that the Galactic Council realized that the member planets they represent are now capable of guiding their own destinies. The high authority of the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation, composed of members of each of our planets, I say, has outgrown its necessity. The individual planet governments can be trusted to use the knowledge that is carefully guarded within the GBI with discretion and for the good of their people. We of Pluto will vote against continuation of central GBI control and authority. There it is. Another vote to strip GBI of its control. Don't they understand that the galaxy secrets known only to the GBI, if they become common knowledge, there bound to be trouble between the planets? They should. After the hundreds of years of interplanetary war within our own galaxy, you'd think they'd be thankful for the peace, security, and freedom of fear that the GBI Council has given them. If we failed in any way, I could understand. If every planet is given control of the secret weapons, and scientific knowledge that we guard in their common interest, there's bound to be serious trouble. Of course, any thinking person knows that. But the fact is that half the planets have already declared themselves against GBI control. It seems ridiculous, but it looks like they don't want peace. I'm afraid that many elements in our galaxy, if given the chance, wouldn't be very peaceful. Doctor, how's that possible? What would they have to gain? Power. Perhaps riches. At any rate, do you realize that to date, Earth is the only planet that has not announced whether it is for or against continued GBI control. That's right. All the other planets have made their decisions and announced them. The entire galaxy is awaiting Earth's decision. Earth's vote is the deciding vote, then? That's right. Well, whoever carries Earth's vote to the galaxy meeting on Mars tomorrow has a tremendous responsibility. When will we have Earth's decision, Commander? Well, President Chambray is meeting with the Cabinet of Elder Statesmen now to take the United States of Earth's vote. Oh, perhaps this is the answer now. Yes? Commander Richard? Yes, sir. The Elder Statesmen have selected you to carry Earth's vote to the Council meeting on Mars tomorrow. Be ready to leave within the hour. Very good, sir. But the decision, can you tell me? Earth's vote? is for continually the eye control of our Earth. Yes, sir, and thank you. Thank heaven. Say that again. You'd better hurry. Earth will be on takeoff periphery from Mars in 43 minutes. Oh. Well, Dr. Sarkov, will you hold the fort for me here at GBI while I'm away? Certainly, Commander. Good. Victor, call President Chambray's office and ask his secretary to deliver the voting instructions to me at the sky flash. Yes, Commander. Good luck to you, sir. Thank Any you. last-minute instructions? You'll find up-to-the-minute reports on all current business in my daily files. Victor here can fill you in on anything you don't understand. Oh, I almost forgot. Do you remember the Meltner gang? Well, aren't they the ones who hijacked the Galaxy Crillium supply last year? Yes, we've been looking for them ever since. Right. Well, I got a report this morning that Meltner was seen on Mars. <laughs> Council is voting its most important decision in galaxy history. Mm. I've ordered a red alarm put out for him on Mars. 
While I'm en route, keep me informed if you get any reports on it. Right. You'd better get going. You'll miss your takeoff for everything. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor. Call GBI headquarters Mars. Find out if there are any new reports on Milton. Yes, sir. Why'd you call me here to Mars? Another Krillium hijacking job for Pluto? Much more important than that, Milton. In two days, the Galaxy Council meets to abolish GBI control of secret weapons. And they will give all of this information to the individual planets. The deciding vote is Earth's. In talented hands, such as ours, we could dominate the galaxy in six months. Now I understand what you've been doing with the Corillium I hijacked. You've been buying votes. That's right. But Earth is one of the planets whose vote we were not able to buy with the stolen Krillium. So, what can I do to make Earth vote with us? With the help of the machine in that box, you will stop them from voting. Galaxy Council regulations provide that a voting delegate of every planet must be present when a vote is taken affecting all planets. If one is missing, however, it is forced to accept the decided vote. I see. If Earth's representative isn't there to vote, they got to accept the vote of the majority that was present. What is it? We've received a report that Commander Richards, Earth's delegate to the Galaxy Council meeting, has just taken off from Earth, accompanied by Flash Gordon and Dale Arden. Gordon? Good. What time does that bring them to Planetoid Epsilon 30? Tomorrow afternoon at 14 hours. Your job is to intercept them at Planetoid Epsilon 30. <laughs> this is one job I'm going to enjoy more than I expected. What do you mean, Flash Gordon? We met once before. Six of the men of my outfit are in the GBI prison as a result. Well, you'll have them all to yourself on Planetoid Epsilon 30. Now, come with me. I want to show you how this ray machine works. Everything okay, Dale? What's going on? Oh, Dale. You feel better? Ah. Oh, that's the first sound sleep I've had in three days, ever since the elders started their debates. What was wrong with number three engine? Uh, the feed line from the Anto fuel tank was jammed. It's okay now, though. I got it cleaned out. Good. Yeah. We must be coming into the home stretch. That's ah. right. Well, planetoid Epsilon 30 should be coming up in a couple of minutes, two degrees off our port. Should reach Mars in about three hours. There it is, Epsilon 30. And range now. We'll set the rain machine. Point seven. Trajectory line minus four. Point five. Trajectory line minus two. Point three. Trajectory line zero. Second and Ray hit it. I'll bet my 
bottom credit in order to change the properties of the actual fuel and make them non fissionable. You have to avoid a crop. I'm going to try and break it even if it me into planetoid's atmosphere. At the rate we're dropping, you'll never make it. Flash plummets towards a crash landing on the planetoid Epsilon 30 after being hit by a ray machine which decomposed the fission properties of its atto fuel. While below on the planetoid, the man responsible watches for the first sign of the falling ship. And inside the doomed ship, Flash Gordon strains at the controls, trying to pull the ship out of its vertical descent in the few seconds that remain. by Gordon. For five years, he's been waiting for his chance to get even. And it'll be much more satisfying for us to meet Gordon face to face and settle our account with him in person. He's dangerous. Get this, Stibble. You better hide that yellow streak. Every time we've been on a job, you've shown it. This is your last chance. Once more, and you won't leave here alive. Talk about living on borrowed time. I will ever pull this out of that one, Flash. I'll never know. It might be a case of out of the frying pan and into the fire. We've still got to find a place to land quick. We're losing speed. I can feel it. That isn't our only worry. The hydrogen that powers our landing jets may have been affected by the ray, too. Why don't you make a test, Flash, to be sure? Right. And now. I've got to contact Dr. Zarkov and let him know our predicament. I'll get him for you. All I can see below is water. That's all I've seen ever since we pulled out of that crash. Look up Epsilon 30, will you, Dale? There must be land. If there is, it's probably at the bottom of all that water. Gordon in Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Gordon in Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. There's Flash now. I'll take it. Yes, sir. Captain Gordon, hold on. Here's Dr. Zorkov. Flash? Right. If I figure correctly, you've just cleared Epsilon 30. Not exactly. Here's Commander Richards. He'll explain. We've run into trouble, Doctor. I don't know if I'll make it to Mars to cast Earth's boat. We're forced to make an emergency landing on Epsilon 30. I'll call Mars and have them send a rescue ship. No, don't. What happened to us probably would happen to them. Only they wouldn't be so lucky. But you've got to be at that meeting. What happened to you? 
We were hit by some sort of a rain. No time to explain now. But what is evident is that someone, some group, doesn't want me present to cast Earth's vote tomorrow. Commander Richard, you've got to be at that meeting. We're going to try to make every effort. But President Chambray must try to get the Galaxy Council meeting postponed just in case I can't. You mean you want him to send another voting delegate to replace you? Yes, immediately. If the delegate leaves immediately, it means the meeting would have to be postponed only one day. We'll try. But I doubt if the council will agree to a postponement. The opposition would like nothing better than to have Earth miss its vote. I'll call you back just as soon as I've talked to the president. Good luck. Find any land? Yes, we overshot it when we were pulling out of the crash dive. We should be landing in a couple of minutes. Yeah, it's coming up. Take positions for landing. I'll make the major landing test, will you, Dale? Right. At least we're heading in for a safe landing. Here they come. We probably spotted our ship on the flat over there. They'll have to land nearby it anyway. It's the only level stretch of land on the whole planetoid. Come on. They'll be disappointed if the reception committee isn't waiting when they get off their ship. Target practice. You sure you weren't hurt? Uh, all the pieces seem to be in one place. Well, our chances of getting out of here, even if I lock holes in time for me to make the council meeting on Mars, are practically nil. Our only chance is to take the ship of our friends up there. Yeah. I hope Dr. Zarkov and President Chambray were able to make a postponement and send another delegate. We've got a clear channel in the sky flies too, Dr. Zarkov. So I see, but no response. They must have landed on Epsilon 30 and left the ship. President Chambray's office calling. I'll take it. 
Zarkov here. Has he word from Commander Richard, Doctor? No, sir. He must be at that meeting. I've just had a tele-radio talk with the President of the Council on Mars. And the opposition won't agree to a postponement? Is that it, sir? Afraid so. With Earth's boat for GBI control missing, the opposition is certain to win. We'll keep trying to contact Richards. Meanwhile, I think I might be able to get a postponement. How? Oh. Do I have your permission to speak with Cribbian, the Pluto delegate and head of the opposition? Go ahead and let me know what happens. Put you through to Cribbian on Mars right away, Doc. Cribbian's ready to speak, sir. Mr. Delegate, Dr. Zarkov here. How nice to hear from you, Dr. Zarkov. It's been a long time. Thank you. Is Commander Richards with you? Richards? With me? How could he be? He hasn't arrived on Mars. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you knew. You thought I knew what? That Richards landed on Mars incognito over an hour ago. But that's impossible. I mean, uh, no one's been told. I spoke to him less than 15 minutes ago. From here? Well, now that he's safe, I guess there's no harm in letting you know that we sent two ships from Earth. You mean he wasn't on Sky Flash 2 with Flash Gordon? You can appreciate the necessity for a decoy. Earth's vote is too precious to take chances. If Richards comes to see you, have him call me, will you? Zarkov! Zarkov! Look, there's a place to hide down there. Come on. Come on, Rebel. Oh. Gotta move on. Come on. Now get out there in that clearing. We need a decoy. It might be a trap. No! What are you talking about? No! I can't go out there! Yeah! No! 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 Don't shoot! No! No! All right, no. decoy. That's enough. The coast's clear. Come on. No! Come on. All right, hold the documents. Now we'll give that Cribbian a taste. 